Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I know there's a lot of interest on this channel in general about Vulcan. People in the game development world just seem to be really interested in what Vulcan's all about and want to learn more about it. And essentially, Vulcan is a low-level successor or replacement or uh, parallel option to... Uh, say OpenGL or uh, Direct3D 11. It's basically closer to the hardware along the same lines as uh, Direct3D 12 and Metal are. So Vulkan is the cross-platform thing from the Kronos group, the same people that maintain OpenGL, and it's a low-level graphics interface. And the, the entire target audience behind Vulkan are game engine makers. So the whole idea is that basically they took OpenGL and made it much closer to the metal. So you are working closer to the hardware. There are less checks involved. It's fast it's much, much, much lower level, and that puts the burden on the developer, but they can squeeze more performance out as a result. Well, one name you might hear over and over again is Lunar G, and today I'm going to explain exactly what Lunar G is in regards to Vulkan, and this can get a little bit confusing. Now, the reason I'm talking about this at all is because yesterday, I believe it was, Lunar G just released an updated version of their SDK. If you're interested, of course, I will throw this link down below. And it's got a whole bunch of updates to what Lunar G actually has. Now, the next obvious question you might have is, well, what the heck is Lunar G? And Lunar G is essentially the Vulkan SDK. So what you're probably used to in the past is using an OpenGL SDK or a Direct uh, X SDK, which is a bundling of tools, libraries, headers, and everything else that you use to develop to that graphics library. Well, when you're dealing with Vulkan, it gets a lot more complex. Um, again, since it's lower level, there is more burden or responsibility shifted off to the other people that are involved in it. It's not as turnkey of a solution as you are used to with those other APIs like OpenGL or Direct3D11. Um, instead, you, you have to provide a whole lot more. Let's take a quick look here. You'll have an idea of the basic high level of uh, how a Vulkan app works. Now, what you've got down here is your application. This is you. This is the part that you as an end developer care about. You write an application. There's more to it than this. There's also uh, SBIRV, which is basically a shader language that's been compiled to binary form and your Vulkan code. These come in together and they go into the Vulkan loader. Now the loader is a little bit harder to explain but you can see down here, basically the, um, the application sits on one end, directly interfaces with the loader. The loader is basically an interface between Vulkan and ICD. We'll get to ICD in a second, but the loader is responsible for working with the various layers as well as supporting multiple GPUs and their drivers. Any Vulkan function may wind up calling into a diverse set of layers, loaders, uh, ICDs, etc. The loader is responsible for basically, it's the mailman in the situation. It, it calls off to this guy or that guy or this guy or that guy, and you need a loader to make things work. And there are a couple of implementations of loaders. Now, if we come back over here, this is the Kronos Group uh, GitHub page. And you'll notice right here, there is a Vulkan loader implementation in there. So along the lines, you've got uh, the SBRV. This is what I talked about, the binary compiler for um, basically taking a high-level shader language like HLSL and making it into something that your video card works with. Uh, there are tools to work with Vulkan. There are the header files, which would be uh, basically, uh, where did my graphic go? basically be this layer right here. Uh, but what you have in the loader, the loader is that thing that kind of ties it all together. And this is actually, um, so see, Vulkan is an explicit API enabling direct control over how GPUs actually work. Vulkan supports that have multiple GPUs, each running with a different driver. So you've got the device driver, um, which can also be called the installable client driver, ICD. Again, that is this layer right here. And then you've got your physical device. So you've got like an abstraction layer or a device driver layer between the physical device and the, um, the loader layer. And that needs to be implemented by somebody. Now, in this particular case, this is what Lunar G actually provides. Lunar G is providing this loader and a bunch of other things. They compile a, a compiler um, for SPIRV tools you need for debugging, etc. But you'll notice here we are in the repository on the official Kronos page for the Vulkan loader. Again, you need a loader for Vulkan to work on any particular platform. And you will see if we get to the very bottom here, all right, about here, you will see this has been developed primarily by Lunar G. So basically, the loader that is implemented with Vulkan, that's Lunar G, among other things. So basically, Lunar G creates the development tools and the resources and the requirements necessary to work with uh, the Vulkan 
SDK on any platform. Basically, they implement the uh, wi Windows and Linux uh, versions, and I think somehow through uh, Molten VK, they're also getting into the Mac OS side of things. So basically, if you need to develop a Vulkan application on um, Windows or Linux, you are going to use the Lunar G SDK as your base. This is the tool you use to actually write your code. It provides the Vulkan loader, the validation layers, and development tools such as trace tools, the SPIR-V tools for um, compiling uh, things like GLSL into binary format that Vulkan requires, uh, runtime installers, and documentation as an example. So basically this would be, um, it's kind of like if you took Direct3D and it's split into two parts. You've got the one side that deals with the hardware interface and then the other side that deals with the software, uh, you know, so the developers interact with. Well, the developer interaction side of things, if you're on Linux or Windows, is provided by Lunar G. So that's what the relationship is there. Um, now, they're not the only ones doing this. Actually, if you go over here, Android actually provides their own implementation as well. So if you use Vulkan on Android, you use their own runtime here. So this this is Vulkan's implementation on, so they provide their own loader. Uh, they provide, of course, their own driver so that it runs on Android, etc. So um, by no means is Lunergy the only people providing this uh, intermediate level, but they are definitely the predominant one if you're working in desktop development. Now, again, the majority of people that are working with Vulkan are working at, a, at a, you know the game engine level. These are people that work for um, you know Unreal or Epic or various other game engine companies, or potentially you know you're part of an open source project like Godot and you want to support Vulkan. But you do see there is a great deal of complexity of getting Vulkan running on on hardware and Lunar G is handling that for those two platforms I mentioned. Now, one thing I should point out, Lunar G is actually heavily sponsored by Steam um, or sorry, Valve. So that's the people that are making uh, Vulkan for desktop PCs basically possible. You can thank Valve for it, but Lunar G is the one that creates the SDK and makes things work. Now you as the end developer, say I wanna get involved with Vulkan development you know, so even if you just want to play around, well, where should I go? Well, I think the number one resource I could give you, well, first off, if you go to Lunar G, you will find that their Vulkan SDK actually has a bunch of samples and uh, such, and they've also got their documentation uh, for how to get things set up. But again, this is all very, very low level, very, very confusing stuff. What I found is probably one of the best uh, sites out there for getting you started is Vulkan Tutorials or Vulkan-Tutorial.com. I'll throw this link down below as well. And you can see they walk through the process of getting um, Vulkan and, you know, tertiary libraries like uh, GFL, uh, GF. LW, which is a windowing application you need to get, you know, working on any platform in the first place. And they walk through all of the setup. But basically when you think of, they say straight out here, you need the SDK. Uh, let me go back here. So you need the Vulkan SDK. Well, the Vulkan SDK that they're term they're talking about here is just straight up Lunar G. So if you want to think about it in the easiest, most simplified terms possible, Lunar G is the Vulkan SDK as long as you're working on Windows or Linux or possibly Mac OS. Whereas if you're working on a specific platform, they need to implement their own, as you saw that um, Android has implemented, and by the way, macOS hasn't. Um, so there is no iOS uh, Vulkan implementation. Vulkan does not run on iOS. Vulkan, I'm uh, sorry, iOS did their own thing with Metal. Uh, iOS is all about building their own little walled gardens, but there is something called Molten VK, which is an adaption layer between Vulkan and iOS, if you just wanted to make things even more confusing. But if you are interested in getting started with Vulkan, first off, have some patience. It is very, very, very low level. Even even with the um, you know implementation done above it for you by Lunar G, it's still an exceptionally low level API. And I'll give you an idea what we're talking about. So here it is, this is just setting up your development environment. So here is the tutorial on drawing a triangle on screen. That's it, literally, we're just gonna draw a triangle on screen. So let's open that up. Okay, hey, that's not so bad. All right, so page and a half, two pages to get the triangle. Oh, oh, wait a minute. No, that's part one. Then we get into part two. Then we get into part three. Then we get into part four. And then we get into part five. Okay, not so bad. Oh, wait a minute. Part six. Uh, let's see. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, 
here we go. After we create our frame buffer and we do our command buffers and render. I think we're there. Have we drawn our triangle yet? We're almost there. Oh, there we go. After probably 30 pages of tutorial, uh, maybe 700 lines of code, you have a triangle drawn on screen. So what I'm saying, Vulkan is still a very low level API. Even when you're using Lunar G's SDK on top of it, Vulkan is extremely low level API. But Again, this site does an excellent job of walking you through it. If you are willing to go through a small book to be able to draw a triangle up on screen, Vulcan is perfect for you, and this site does a very good job. And of course, I will throw that down below as well. So if you're interested in learning Vulcan development uh, and you're curious what exactly Lunar G was, hopefully this cleared things up a bit. Obviously, there's a lot more technical detail I'm glossing over underneath, and I don't want to get into it because it makes my brain hurt. You also may question, am I going to be doing a Vulcan tutorial at any point in time on this channel? And the answer is, good God, no. Uh, it would take me a couple of hours of video to get to the point of drawing a triangle on screen. It's not it's not a pleasant thing to teach people. It's not a pleasant thing to learn. And I think at the end of the day, most people aren't going to use Vulkan. They're going to use something built on top of Vulkan, either a game engine or an abstraction layer. Someone else comes in and does all of the pain for you, and you just benefit from the fruits of their labor. But if you are the type of guy that wants to look behind the scenes and you want to have you know your fingers in the dirt to figure out exactly how all this stuff works... Uh, VulcanTutorial.com is a great resource. It's a lot less confusing than uh, even Lunar G's stuff or Cronus's examples. So uh, at the highest level, when you're just starting out, so, so you fired up um, you know, GCC or Visual Studio or Xcode and you want to start typing out some Vulcan code, VulcanTutorial.com is probably the place to start. All the others are going to be at a much more lower level. And then there's even more hoops you got to jump through. So that's it for now. A bit of a rambling tutorial or a bit of a rambling overview. I wanted to cover exactly what Lunar G was. And in order to do that, I had to jump into a little bit of what Vulcan was. Now, there's a lot of reasons still to be excited about Vulcan. This getting closer to the metal thing has two real major options, uh, advantages, I mean. Since they've abstracted out the interface like they've done here so that there's this driver layer, uh, the loader layer, etc., between your application, what they can do is they can make a lot of changes. Right now, it's done using extensions, which gets creaky and it's um, bloatsome on the driver level, makes drivers more complex, makes crashing more likely. They can expand what Vulkan can do more rapidly in the future. And in theory, when you've got less layers involved, you should get better performance. In some ways, you're kind of going more towards the console way of doing things than um, the, the desktop way of doing things. And that's one of those ways that consoles have always been able to manage out just that a little bit better performance, less overhead involved, etc. And that's one of the big upsides to Vulkan as an end user. So that means like, as a player of video games, you know how sometimes you hear, okay, we now support Vulkan and then you get 20% more frames per second. Well, that's why. But that work to get that 20% more frames per second is 100% thrown on the programmer, the driver developers, etc. So it's definitely a worthwhile technology. It's just becoming more and more specialized. Whereas I used to say, you know, if you want to learn OpenGL or Direct 3D 11 or earlier, go for it. You know, you may not ever use it. You may end up just being a Unity developer or a uh, Unreal Engine developer or a Godot developer or whatever. But learning that low-level technology was always advantageous. With Vulkan, it's getting a little bit less so. It's so low-level that I'm almost just saying, all right, this is low-level like we don't learn how to use how to develop our own BIOSes anymore. We just assume that the BIOS functionalities are there for us. 3D rendering layers are starting to get down there. It's starting to get to the point where the number of developers that need to be aware of this kind of stuff is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And we should just be building on top of it, either if we're using an abstraction layer or if we're using... Um, you know, Vulkan itself. And I actually did a video recently on cross-platform uh, rendering layer. So if you are interested in, you know, still working at pretty low level, but you want to be able to do it in a cross-platform manner and you don't want to do 700 lines of code to draw a triangle, do check that out. I will throw it in the link down below. All right, that's it for now. Hopefully that was useful and informative and not full of too many errors. You know, when you're generalizing things, it can happen sometimes. So uh, if I have made a blatant error, please let me know in the comments down below so other people don't get led down the wrong path. Uh, uh, my experience with Vulkan has been quite limited. I've done this equivalent. I've basically drawn a triangle on screen, got a 3D cube drawn on screen, was looking at doing this in terms of figuring it out for myself so that I could do a tutorial on it. And I went, whoa, this is way too complex to do tutorials on. So I just kind of left it there. So if you've got a whole lot more experience with Vulkan than I do, and I've made a mistake, do uh, please correct it in the comments down below. Also, if you are a developer, you're looking at this going, 
yeah, yeah, I want to jump in or God, no, to hell with that. I'd be interested to see what your perspective is. And that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.